Demolition Man. Hey, brother, Pablo Picasso. Um, order a capo. C-A-P-O, and the brand is Kaiser. K-Y-S-E-R. Get a bright color so you can distinguish it from the others. Do not get the cheap one. They suck. Okay. Um, so, let's see. You can play this without a capo, of course. I'm going to do it without the capo until you get one. But it won't be in his key. Your chords are going to be E minor to D. And then I want you to play D sharp diminished. So move the D shape to the D string at the first fret and then add your pinky. This is a sweet chord change that guitar players love, but it feels like the same thing with a very different chord. So you're going to do... That's just the traditional strum pattern, but I want you to get the chord version. Now we have the two interval versions. The first one uses the low intervals, like the way Cope starts the song, like um. And he has three note voicings, but I want to keep your simpler. So this is a minor third on E. It's the seventh fret A string, fifth fret D string. It's just a two note pair, like a power chord. And in fact, I'm gonna switch the next one to a power chord. There's one thing I've changed after listening to it again. I want you to play five and seven now on the A D string, like a power chord, and then just sharpen the root like this. And then flip it back over to a minor third. Okay, and then those high notes are also based in thirds. Okay. So if you start here with seven and five, on the first two strings you'll play eight and seven. And then use your ring finger to modulate the melody like this. And then just flatten your first finger so they're both at seven. And it's the same embellishment with the melody. One version of the song, and you have the. Okay, and you have the open chord. Also did some blues riffs in A. We did um, whatever the Zeppelin tune is called, and it goes. It's based on the A minor. Bend. It's literally just the A minor blues scale. Okay, now we modulate it to B. So it's first finger A string, second fret. There should be natural, and it's start on the open D for the next riff. Vaughn riff, which is a blues and E that went real standard E groove, so it's oh, oh, three, four, two, two, four, two. I'm gonna put that on the four chord. Back to one. And then for the five, you do the slide from the B. You're ready on B, and you go. turnaround it's the G in the high E string and it's four 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 three 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 two 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 and then hammer on 
on your G, O to 1, and then play the high E string. So the turn on is triplet, triplet. That's it, bud. You keep working on your different um, chord cycles. So you have uh, E, E major, A minor, A major, B7. That gets you through all the chords in the key of E, principal ones. Then you have four finger G, C add nine, D, don't move your ring finger, back to C add nine, G. And then you have your C cycle, um, which, is, which is good for the Taylor Swift song. So it's C, F is four with the thumb, Back to C, this is really crucial, and then the G that looks and feels like a C chord, which I call G3, three fingers. So C, F, C, G. And the Taylor Swift song was like, um, then the chorus is this. Verses in the pre-chorus have this like eighth note downstroke feel. F. I think the verse goes C, two measures, then F, two measures, then A minor, two measures, back to F. So just use the chart because there's little variations that are important. But anytime the F goes to the G quickly, you can take your thumb F and just move it up a full step and then resolve to C. Or you can actually shift your hand into the shape of that G. So you have F, G, C if you need to be quick. Or if it's a little slower, F, G, then G3 to C. Have fun, bud.